Hello everyone and welcome. In the previous tutorial we had built this low-tech space plane and what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how we can descend this space plane from orbit and glide it right down onto the runway. In the process of doing that we're going to talk about where to begin your descent burn and how far into the atmosphere you need to bring your initial trajectory. We're going to talk about the attitude of your plane as you go through the upper part of the atmosphere and how you can control the drag and the amount of heating your plane is going to endure. And then we're going to talk about how to glide your plane in the lower part of the atmosphere in such a way that you can put it right down safely onto the runway. Now remember, we had only just built this thing. We have yet to see how it performs in the atmosphere, so I would absolutely recommend testing this thing before you end up using it in an actual mission. So what we're going to do is we're just going to launch it from the space plane hangar, and then we're going to use Alt F12 to bring up the cheat menu and put ourselves into a low carbon orbit. Now what you want to do is you want to get yourself a feel for your space plane. Every space plane's a little bit different. But what I like to do just to get myself started is here's the KSC and in around here it's on the night side. There is a peninsula. I hope people can see it. It's right around here. I like to center on and then that's where I like to just have a common place that I start my descent burn from. And I find if I pick myself a common place that to start my descent from, then that's one variable that I'm not going to vary. And then I can vary the altitude of my spacecraft. So we're going to put ourselves onto the retrograde vector. We're going to make sure our engines are engaged. And then we're going to burn. And I'm going to put my periapsis at about 40 kilometers. Sort of a nice getting started spot. Well, that yeah, 39.78, that's fine. Okay, so we got to, oh, we are out of the sun, so which way we're pointed right now really doesn't matter. Get ourselves to where just before we enter the atmosphere. Okay, there we go. About 75 kilometers up, we're about to enter the atmosphere. So we want to get ourselves into an attitude that's good for going, <laughs> that's good for our descent. So I'm going to start by pointing myself straight up away from the planet. That's the radially out vector, straight up. And then I'm going to turn myself so that the belly of my plane is pointing in the direction that we're moving. And we're moving in an eastward direction. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pitch myself forward and put my heading at 90 degrees. Okay, so now we're coming in belly first and pitching up very high. Now exactly how high you want to pitch is actually again a function of your plane. I'm gonna also put myself on free view. I find this really easy from here, or much easier from here. Because you actually have quite a bit of control over one, how much heating your plane is going to endure, and also how far your plane is going to, dr to glide. If you pitch up like that and have a high angle of attack, that means you'll be slowing down quicker and you will be not gliding as far. The downside of that is that you will be enduring much more heating with that. So if you start to find that you're heating too much, you can then pitch downwards to reduce the amount of heating, but that means you're going to glide further combination of those two, you can actually do a pretty reasonable job of controlling where it is that you're going to be going down. Always never at the expense of blowing up your aircraft. You never do want to do that. And if you end up ditching into the water, you ditch into the water. That's not a big deal. But with practice, you should be able to get yourself to the point where you can put yourself pretty regularly onto the runway. Perhaps do a quick save, try a bunch of times, try and dial in what it is that's going to work for you and for your plane. I'm going to kind of split the difference and put this on the 45 degree pitch mark, just like that, and then we'll adjust as we go down. Another thing you may hear people saying as well is you can also turn side to side. 
So you could do this sort of thing. That also increases your angle of attack, but it does, there's less heating involved in doing that. And then you, but of course, what you're going to do is you're going to be steering away from the KSC, which means that you're going to have to then steer yourself back again. That's another way to do it. In fact, that's exactly what the space shuttle used to do. You can play around with that, but for now, I'm going to keep it simple. 45 degree pitch, 90 degree heading, just see where this goes. Now, what we can do is we can move ourselves forward here a little bit, time warping a bit till we start to see those heating effects. Oh, oh, we're starting to get them, so let's turn off the time warp. Stuff's getting serious now. Another thing you might want to do is turn on the temperature gauges. So that is F10. We press F10. Oh, that's the temperature overlay. I don't particularly like that one. There we go. So temperature gauges all enabled. Okay. And you can cycle through them. This is F10 I'm pressing, all disabled. I like the temperature gauges on, but the highlighting disabled. I find the highlighting distracting. We're not seeing any temperature gauges yet, so that's good. We're coming up to the continent that's the KSC. So I think we're doing okay. And this thing does want to pitch forward. That's because we do have the center of mass up fairly far forward. That's okay because pitching forward is much safer than pitching back and flipping out. I'm going to risk a little bit higher angle of attack here. Well, I'm pitched up now as high as I can go. <laughs> this thing doesn't have the big best control authority in the world because it's got tiny little wings. You can put on another set of reaction wheels in here if you like and of course once we're not worried about um, getting inside that fairing, you can make your wings a lot bigger too. We're getting some heating bars here, but that is just the RCS thruster blocks at the front. That's okay. The ones we got to worry about are things like the cockpit or some of these fuselage parts or wings for that matter, because after those start to blow up, clearly things start to go very badly. I am now pitched up as hard as I can trying my best to slow myself down. We lost our heat gauges on our thruster blocks, that's all right. And what you'll find, like, because this is built out of really low tier parts, that as you progress up the tech tree and unlock better parts, this gets easier. So if you can fly something like this, you can fly pretty much anything. I'm feeling I am overshooting my runway just a little bit, but we still have control over this. Well, it's not over yet. So I probably should have reduced my periapsis more than I did. That's okay. To be honest, and the heating is very much under control. Again, I am still pitching up as hard as I can. Trying my best to slow down. I can also maybe go a little bit sideways. I don't think that's really helping. Let's just pitch up as hard as we can. Okay, we are definitely overshooting. That's okay. If I had quick saved, I'd go back up and I would try this again. But instead, what I'm going to do is overshoot and then turn around. So we're going to come a little bit sideways. What I'm going to do, I can also play this maneuver. Be straight down. <laughs> really trying to stop and stall this plane maneuver. We have still a ton of altitude, over 20 kilometers. The aerodynamics, the air is still very thin up here, so things really haven't started to click in. Okay, we are just going to go straight. Here we go. Heating is no longer a problem. Now it's just a question of putting it onto the runway. So right now I'm pitching up as hard as I can. The air is starting to get thicker, so I'm starting to get a little bit more action on this. Of course, we're going straight for the runway. Oh, this is starting to feel pretty all right now. Just getting to six kilometers above the surface and we're starting to level off. There we go. We've slowed down a lot. 
But now we have the luxury we should be able to make this run win. Again, what I would recommend, quick saving, practicing. The more you practice, the better you get. Now this thing is pretty light, so I actually do want to make sure I don't lose too much speed. I want to keep my speed up, so I'm watching my speed here. I'm still about 142 meters per second, so I don't want to pitch right up and stall this right out. I do want to make sure I can carry speed and get myself to the runway. As you can see, you don't have to be perfect coming in. This isn't the best glider in the world. It has stubby, stubby little little wings. And with a plane that's as bad a glider as this, you need to keep that speed up. It's got little stumpy wings. When you build something better, and as you advance up the tech tree, it's easier to build things that are better. Then it gets easier, but the principles remain the same. So if you're finding this guy a little bit too challenging, that's completely okay. Trust me, this is not my first try at putting this thing on the runway either. Just wait till you're a little bit higher on the tech tree. But I just wanted to show what you can do with even relatively little tech. Alright, let's lower that landing gear. Less than 500 meters from the surface now, but we are going to definitely make this runway. But I do need to keep that speed up, and then we're going to pitch up. We're going to flare right at the end, slow ourselves down. Hopefully, nice, calm landing. Okay, up, flare, flare. Oh dear, we're dropping. Whoa! Whoa, 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 oh, look at that. It wasn't pretty, but we're down. <laughs> Let's start tapping these brakes a little bit. I don't want to brake too aggressively because this thing really wants to flip over. I could definitely spend some time tweaking the suspension on this, but you get the idea. In orbit, back down again. All right, let's do this thing for real. Let's get ourselves back into the space plane hangar. All right, so now it's time to put this guy on a booster and get it into space for real. So we're gonna retract the landing gear, and then we're gonna use this button here to switch our editor. So we are now in the VAB. We're gonna grab this. It automatically flips to vertical mode. I've already created myself a booster for this just to save ourselves some time. It is the Reliant-RS2 booster. I'm just gonna slide that under here. Again, the craft file will be in the description if you want to take a look at this and play with it yourself, but this is raring to go. This booster is built upon no new principles that we haven't talked about before in this series, but if you need a hand with how to build something like this, then you can go check out my most recent rocket building video. And don't forget there is a contract associated with this. We had rescued Dunning Kerman from low Kerman orbit and deposited him upon our space station and left him there. So in order to fill off the contract, we need to get him back down to the surface. So that is our destination. We're going up to Kerbin Station. We're going to pick up Dunning and we're going to bring him back down to the surface. And while we're bringing him back down to the surface, we'll do a quick recap on the principles on how to land a space plane down onto the runway. And I'll take a second go at trying to do a little bit of a better job than what I did before. And of course, rendezvousing is also something we have talked about before, as is docking, though there is one tiny little difference this time. The one thing to make sure of with a craft like this one with the docking port at the back is you do want to control at the end from that docking port. Notice that that flips around the entire nav ball, so do make sure that you do that. Otherwise, this is exactly the same as what we've done before. So we pick up Dunning, and now it's time to get him down to the surface, and we're going to use this as an opportunity to summarize what we've talked about in this video. 
Number one, pick a common spot from which to start your descent burn. This helps you control all the different variables that are going to affect your descent. At least that's one thing you're going to keep consistent. And then reduce your periapsis. Play around with what periapsis works for your plane. On this go, I reduce my periapsis all the way down to 30 kilometers. On different planes, that's going to be a different number. And anyone who tells you that there is a magic right number for all planes is just wrong. Same thing for your pitch as you enter the atmosphere. Play around with what pitch works for your plane. There's not one right answer, but the big thing to realize is that the higher your pitch is, that's the higher your angle of attack is, and the more you're going to slow down. But also, the more your plane is going to heat up. So you use pitch to control the amount of drag and the amount of heating. You want more drag, pitch up. You get too much heating, pitch down. Don't pitch up to the point that things start to explode. If you overshoot the runway, that's better than blowing up in the upper part of the atmosphere. In fact, you can see here, I'm overshooting the runway once again. It turns out that 30 kilometer periapsis was still not low enough. Remember that you are a glider, and a glider without speed is a rock. So keep your speed up. Don't let yourself start to fall, and if you find that you're starting to fall, pitch down to build your speed back up again. The idea being that as you approach the runway, you have enough speed that you can pitch up, flare, slow down your vehicle, and drop it down onto the runway. And finally, and even though I've mentioned this already a couple of times, I can't emphasize it enough, practice. Every plane is different. So it's not just about you getting better, it's about also you getting used to your plane. Man, I'll make sure that the craft file that's in the description will have the suspension on these landing gear fixed. But with that, I think I'm going to draw this video to a close. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again for the next one.